Hi everyone, it's James here from TSR Jivey Talks Tech. Online gear review videos like this one can be brilliant. They allow you, the discerning viewer, to get up close and personal with some of the latest and greatest audio goodies and hear what we, the reviewers, think is good, bad, and in many cases damn right ugly about the gear you might be looking to buy. However, there is one type of review that's very difficult for us, and that's output transducers, speakers and headphones to you and me. And this is because you're hearing the video through your headphones, speakers, earbuds, or phone speakers. And well, that's not how we're hearing it. So I'm going to start this review by saying, if you like what you hear from me about these speakers, please do check them out at a dealer in your part of the world. These are the Image 2 Active Studio Monitors from Fluid Audio. Let's check them out. Image 2 is an active three-way reference monitor. We have two 8-inch low-end drivers mounted in the sides of the cabinet, a 5-inch aluminium cone mid-range driver in the front, and a 1.7-inch AMT folded tweeter. The base to mid crossover happens at 115Hz and the mid to high at 2.8kHz. The two base drivers are each powered by their own 225W Class D amp, the mid driver by a 150 watt class D amp and the tweeter by a 75 watt class D amp. That's a total of 675 watts per box which translates in up to 116 dB SPL from a pair of Image 2 monitors. Now that's loud. The front loading mid top section can be mounted tweeters up or tweeters down as I have them here. Then you can simply rotate the Fluid Audio logo to make things look right. Image 2s are not ported speakers, they are sealed. There's no base port, so there's less to worry about when it comes to positioning your speakers, especially if you need to put them near a rear wall. The sealed design also gives a more even and controlled low end. Let's have a look around the back and see what control we get. First, we have the master volume, and next to this we have a bass control pot, which allows us to dial in more or less bass at 70 Hz. We then have three dip switches to enable standby mode, which turns the speaker off if no input signal is received after 45 minutes. Very handy in the studio. The channel left or right selection switch, which is important when using the digital input, and the input selector, either digital or analog. Next to these switches are three more for the high and mid EQ boost and cut, and the ground lift. We then have the balanced and unbalanced input via XLR or TRS jack, there are AES, EBU and SPDIF digital inputs for digital connectivity up to 24-bit 192K. Under these we have the USB I.O., the analog foot switch jack, the power switch, the 3-pin IEC power socket and the voltage selector. My normal starting point for a new set of speakers is to get them up on the meter bridge of my console or stands if I'm not using a desk and set the controls flat with no cut or boost and play a selection of my favourite tracks through them. Some of these I've worked on and some I only wish I'd worked on. My rig test playlist includes Don't Cry It's Only The Rhythm by Grace Jones, My Love Is On Fire by Stevie Wonder, You Can't Get What You Want by Joe Jackson, The Ketchup Song by Last Ketchup, and of course, Sledgehammer by Peter Gabriel. The Grace Jones track is amazing to check out the top end clarity and the stereo image, as it has one of the most mad stereo images of any tune I know. My Love Is On Fire by Stevie Wonder is a great track to use to check the bass, as the bass part is massive and could get out of control. Cloud9 by Jamiroquai is also great for this. And Sledgehammer, well, because it's Sledgehammer. So, upon initial listening, the Image 2s sound good. Maybe a little lacking in the low end, but that could be because I'm used to my Focal Twin 6Bs and their sub, making it a 2.1 system rather than just stereo. So I'm going to nudge the bass up two clicks on the pot on the back. That's better, but I'm still finding it a little light in the low mids, so let's push those a little bit too. Yeah, that's more like it. However, the Image 2s do have another party trick. Now, many of you will know I'm the owner and user of the Trinov speaker calibration system. This is not an inexpensive 2U rack that in real time deals with any frequency, delay, or phase issues in my listening space. However, Fluid Audio have teamed up with Sonarworks to allow users of their Sound ID reference application to sweep their room and store the speaker calibration directly into the speakers. 
This means no need to run the Sound ID software in system-wide mode or as a plugin inside your DAW. You do the speaker calibration and then store the calibration file directly into the DSP inside the Image 2 speakers. Very handy. I'm connecting the USB port of the Image 2s to my Mac and I install the Fluid Audio DSP configuration tool. And I'll set the speakers to measurement mode, meaning no previous EQ or calibration is being applied. Now let's run through the Sonarworks Sound ID reference process and see if we can make these things really kick. The Sonarworks calibration process takes about 30 minutes and is a two-stage process. First, it calculates where the speakers are with regard to each other and the listening position. Then it uses swept sine wave measurement at 38 positions at or around the listening position sweet spot to generate an EQ curve that balances out the issues that might be there in the room. The better the speaker sound in the room without any nudges or tweaks, the better the result will be. Now, you don't need to see or hear the entire process as it would be the dullest 30 minutes of YouTube video ever and that's saying something. But just to note, you can correct the speaker distance between themselves and the speaker to listening position distance, which the software may have inaccurately measured. Okay, yeah, it's about roughly where... Let's bring my chair in. As it says to do. Bang in the middle. There's my head, I guess. Right, okay, so let's move that then. Now it's telling me to do so. Position the microphone in the listening position. There we go. Start adjusting. Once you've done this, it's time to do the 38 frequency sweeps. And once that's done, Sound ID generates our calibration curve for each of our speakers. Let's go with that. Start measurement. Let's check the results in the Sonarworks software in system-wide mode, meaning that we've applied the calibration to the system output. The EQ is effectively between the output of the audio interface and the speakers. This is just so we can test our settings and make sure we like it. Okay, that's really good. Now all we have to do is export two files from the Sonarworks software and import these files into the speakers. Now, Sound ID can be disabled and shut down, and we still have our calibrated EQ curve, but now it's in the speaker for all time. And it sounds great, and I know it sounds great because I've been using these speakers for the past couple of months, and my mixes are translating to other systems better than I've ever had before. No more muddy bass and low mids. My mixes sound tight and focused. As the name suggests, the Fluid Audio Image 2s give a very accurate and clean stereo image. The mix is full and the low end is tight and controlled. Drums come to life and I can clearly hear the stereo image in the overhead mics. Snare drums and toms snap and blast out at me. It's great! The only real problem now is that I might have quite a bit of remixing to do. But what do you do if you only have one set of speakers and you want to check your mix? Fancy burning a CD and taking it out of the car? No, I didn't think so. Image 2 has what's called Cube Mix mode. This is a playback mode that engages a built-in EQ curve to replicate the sound of the Auratone, or as I know them, Horatone mix cubes. Basically, if you want to hear how your mix will sound via the kitchen radio, use this mode. This mode is how to check your mid-range is working. It's not flattering, it's not pretty, but it can be very useful. At this point, I'm going to mention price because someone somewhere is going to be screaming by now, how much do they cost? 
as of this day in history, the Fluid Audio Image 2 speakers are £16.29 list each. That's a smidge over £3,250 a pair. Not cheap, I know, and I'm sure there are deals to be done out there in the real world. But if you look at other speakers in this price bracket, the Image 2s are giving you a lot of audio bang for your hard-earned buck, pound or shekel. Now we all know that sound is very subjective. One person's bright is another's harsh. One person's fat low end is another's boomy. So if you're in the market for a new set of studio monitors, you really should get yourself along to a dealer and check out the Fluid Audio Image 2s. You really will be very glad you did. So thanks to Kevin, Kenneth and the team at Fluid Audio for getting these over to me and quite frankly for leaving them with me for so long. Please do like, subscribe and hit the bell to be kept in the loop for all future videos. But for now, my name's James Ivey from TSR Jivey Talks Tech and I'll see you again very soon.